Today I'm reviewing a USB power monitor or USB multimeter by KCX. These are being sold by Miri on Amazon and I'll put a link down in the video description below. These are very handy for testing power adapters, testing USB cables, uh, testing battery banks, um, anywhere where you've got a charging issue. Um, this will help you troubleshoot and get all the information you need to figure out what's going on. Especially when you use it in conjunction with a constant current load resistor. Uh, I can set this at 1 amp. It'll draw exactly 1 amps uh, indefinitely. I can set it at 2.43 amps and it'll draw 2.43 amps indefinitely. Uh, I would definitely recommend buying one of these with any kind of USB power monitor. And I'll put a link to that down in the video description below as well. What sets this one apart from the other ones on the market? Uh, there are quite a few that look like this on the market, but those don't actually come with a breakout cable. Uh, this comes with your breakouts for micro USB, lightning, and old style Apple. Uh, that's a, an added bonus right there. Um, price wise, it is about $10 less than the Armatech. Both of these do milliamp hour output, so you can measure the output of a battery bank. Um, the Armatech is a little bit easier to use. The button interface is a little bit more intuitive. It does have an audible speaker and high and low settable alarms. Um, but this uh, KCX one here, it uh, does have the milliamp hour ability, which is a key feature for me. This one also has 10 memory slots, so you can like save memory slots indefinitely up to 10. Um, so how does this work? Let's go ahead and plug in our uh, constant current load resistor there. And you'll see that our voltage is at 5.01 and our amps is at exactly 1 amp. And uh, that tells us that this charger is doing a perfectly good job. It can be anywhere from like 4.7 to 5.25. Uh, you start to get outside of that range and you might want to look at getting a different charger or you might be looking at a bad cable. Um, you know, 4.5 is uh, probably the max low you want to go and 5.5 is probably the max high you want to go. Um, any more or less than that, then you're getting into the danger zone there. You can see that our milliamp hours is automatically going up and the 8 right there stands for memory slot 8. If we did go outside of our 4.5 or 5.5 volt uh, safe limits, we would get an indicator on the screen here. Uh, I'll show you how the, the buttons and the reset work here in a minute. It is kind of uh, confusing. So in order to test a cable, you would compare this value to the value you would get if you plugged a cable in between there and there. Uh, if you got a really huge difference between what you got with this cable and what you got with the other cable, you might have a bad cable. All right, um, how do you test a battery bank? All you do is you plug your uh, same thing into the output there and you turn on your battery bank. And you can see that it is outputting 4.83, 4.88, 4.89. That's acceptable. And since this is always going to pull 1 amp, it's going to discharge this at a 1 amp rate. And that's ideal for testing something. You don't want to be charging a phone or something that's always constantly uh, pulling a different amount of amps. And once this shuts itself off, you just uh, take this number that you get right here, multiply it by 1.35. That accounts for the voltage lots you get going from the 3.7 volts up to 5 volts of the USB. There is some power loss there. So if you multiply your milliamp hours by 1.35, you, you should be pretty close to the milliamp hour rating of the actual cells inside your power bank there. So let's go ahead and get into uh, the button configuration. Um, the instructions don't really give you all the information you need to know. Um, in fact, it doesn't even go over the button pressing at all. So I actually had to email the manufacturer and get the, the skinny there. So basically, uh, you got one button. So pressing it twice, double clicking, puts you into memory slot change mode. So pressing the button one once will advance to the next memory slot. Pressing it twice again will go out of memory slot mode. So now we're back to normal and it's going to start counting up on the milliamp hours again. So um, to reset it, what you're going to do is just hold down the button. And what it does, this is the confusing part. Instead of uh, just resetting number 9 there, it's going to change to number 10 and start 10 all over again. So I'm going to go ahead and hold down the button. It'll change to 10, or 0 in this case. 
and it'll reset that one. Okay, so if I wanted to uh, reset again, I'm going to hold it down and it'll move to number one and reset number one. There we go. So let's do that again without a load on there. So if I want to reset number two, I'm going to hold it down. It's going to move to number two and reset number two, like so. And that's it. There's no calibration. There's no advanced uh, button pressing features. Um, that's all you can do with the buttons. So that's it. It's a decent device. Um, if it were a little bit more intuitive on the button pressing and the instructions actually gave you full instructions on how to do it, um, I'd probably give it, you know, maybe a 4.5 out of 5, but since it's not as intuitive some, as, as some of the other ones I've used, I'm going to give it a, a, a 4 out of 5. Um, it does a milliamp hour reading, and it's uh, right in line with the readings I'm getting on my other devices. So I think it's perfectly acceptable. It's just not advanced button-wise and menu-wise and flashiness-wise. So I'm going to give it a solid 4 out of 5 because it's cheap and it works just fine. So make sure you hit yes for found this review helpful, hit the thumbs up button, and subscribe to my channel.